Hi everyone, in this and the following videos we will present TC Open in more depth. Not just showing the features, but actually showing how to get it up and running. TC Open is developed on GitHub as open source framework that will provide ready-to-use components for automation tasks. This will be a series of free rolling coding sessions with few edits. We will develop UI components for WPF and Blazor using Inkstone framework. If there is anyone out there that would like to contribute with back of HMI components, we are open to it. At this point, we are ready with the foundations of the framework. There might be still some refactorings in the near future, like improved naming and simplifications of some features. Few words about TC Open. TC Open is an object-oriented framework. If you are unfamiliar with OOP concepts, there is an excellent series from Jakub Sagatowski on YouTube in episode 6a and 6b he talks about basics of OOP. In this video we will dive into some basic concepts and at the end we should be able to send log entries into Elasticsearch and view them in Kibana. Okay, so we will open Visual Studio 2019. Let's create new project. Okay, the first project we create is uh, Twink at XI project. Uh, no, no, like this. Let's call it XI TC Open 101. Okay, now we add a PLC project. And we can call that project, let's call it PC Open PLC, whatever. And now, so far, it looks like uh, if we are if we are creating a twink at uh, a three solution, but now we need to add TC Open library. So there several ways we can do it but I will take the we will use instant compiler that will add those libraries from NuGet packages into our PLC project so I will just create a console application now I need to call that application with the name of, of the PLC project so in this case TC open PLC and suffix that project name with a connector so like this connector okay uh, we can leave it leave it like this so we work with dotnet 5 is an experimental stage at this point on, uh, on Inkston but uh, we can use it I guess it's stable enough so now we'll go to nuget.org so you select the feed nuget.org if you if you don't ha don't have this feed installed you should uh, uh, you should add nuget.org with this uh, address but visual studio uh, comes with this as a default setting so now let's search for TC open and I will install a group package a group package is the one that encapsulates all uh, the packages uh, from TC open uh, so instead of installing individual individually each package I will just install this TC open group so mm, Make sure you have this checkbox check, include pre-release. Uh, we want to use pre-release packages. Uh, when you uncheck that box, you would get a list of uh, released packages. But uh, at this point in time, uh, we do not have released packages. Uh, they will come, come up soon. OK, I guess we got TC Open Group package installed. And now we will run the Inkstone compiler. In order to use Inkstone compiler, you will need to get 
the license uh, what is sufficient is the developer license which is for free you can have as many developer licenses as you wish so you go to inkstand.com uh, you say try now you register your account and then you can activate your license for those of you who do not have the this extension installed in Visual Studio so you should go to manage extensions uh, to Visual Studio marketplace and when you type Inkston you will you should find this extension so you just install it then you will need to restart Visual Studio uh, and the extension will be included in in your instance of uh, Visual Studio. Then you have to select this item for it to be displayed uh, in the menu. <coughs> okay, so let's run the instant compiler. And now we will get all those PLC libraries installed and added to our project. So basically this C sharp project behaves as a twin of this TC Open PLC project. Now for the compiler to work properly we need to fill in this data. So let's call it DC Open company DC open group whatever uh, title uh, DC open PLC version uh, I will do it this way uh, this will prevent the the compiler to compile PLC library for this project because we do not need that uh, and let's set this default namespace to DC Open PLC and placeholder holder to DC Open PLC. We can minimize minimize the changes in the in the PLC project because if we are going to use Git, uh, we will get way less uh, changes there. Okay, so. We have the libraries installed. Now let's look uh, what what we can do with those libraries. So this part may be a bit boring. Uh, I will need to explain few concepts, which is uh, TCO context, what is TCO object, and uh, what is TCO task and the different different tasks we have but uh, stay with me because it's uh, it's important and using these libraries will give you a lot of uh, will take away a lot of work from you okay so let's just create uh, and a function book uh, let's call it simple context simple context okay now we will need to extend this uh, function block with extend tco core so this is the tco core library uh, this one and TCO context context okay so with TCO context we created a a root contain container for for our applications we can have different contexts we, we can have more than one context in one application uh, but uh, at this time we'll stick with uh, this simple context we created Okay, now let's create this, uh, an instance of this simple context in main. Simple context. Uh, it's simple context. Okay. 
Now, we should get an error. And that's correct. Because DCO context is an abstract class, so we can, cannot just create a variable with uh, uh, of an abstract class. We needed to c create our object that extends DCO context. But DCO context has a main method that is abstract, and this abstract method must be must be implemented in the derived. Uh, block. So the way we do this is we add main. Okay, so what main does is uh, basically entry point for our application. Uh, so if you if you read this comes from you'll find the description also also in the documentation. It basically says that all your code should go into this main method. The reason why we'll see, we will see we will see later. Okay. And now we will need to find some place where we execute the context. So in our case, it will be uh, main PRG and we simply call run. Okay, with this we make sure that this main, main method is called and that the context is properly opened and properly closed. Okay, so let's now play around with the context a bit. In default implementation the context uh, implements a logger uh, that we can use to lock the messages. So now we are, are in our context in the main method, so we should have the logger accessible to us and we can push a message. So uh, let's say this is a message. Uh, this is a log entry. Okay. Um, and e and um, uh, e message category category dot dot uh, let's make it error okay uh, so now when we run this um, this push method it will push the message every time this method is called so every time we hit the, this method, we get a new entry into the buffer. The buffer, by default, has 1,000 1, uh, entries. Let's see how how will this behave. So let me select this PLC that I have here under my table. Let's activate the configuration. Okay, let's log in with the PLC program and let's run the program. So now let's see what is happening in our logger. So our buffer is full and it is not logging the, the messages anymore at this point. Let's do it this way. We will log the message every n cycles. So uh, this uh, start cycle count. So this is another item that we can <clears throat> access uh, in, in our context. It is basically the context uh, cycle counter. So let's uh, say that we want to log every 100, 100 cycles. So if modulus equals zero, then uh, oops. And if okay, let's log in with download. So we will clear, clear the buffer, and let's see what is happening in in the logger. 
so so far we have 10 messages <clears throat> and if we look in our buffer we get timestamp uh, log entry uh, the text uh, the, uh, the category uh, and this is in, in which cycle or context cycle was the um, message logged so let's see how many messages we got so far 37 okay so let's see how we can retrieve those uh, those messages in uh, an TC open Inkson application so previously we created this uh, TC open PLC connector that at this point is a uh, uh, console a console application so we will leave it leave it like that we will remove this it's just it's left left over from from the template and uh, we will connect to our PLC so let's call it okay, let's create a variable it's PLC equals and now we'll have something like uh, DC open PLC and we should for TC open twin called controller okay so this will be new TC open new and now <clears throat> we will need to tell what kind of adapter we are going to use so in this case it will be twink 3 adapter uh, create um, we should place here uh, our IMS ID. So I will just use uh, a variable that is defined in uh, in my environment variables. So it's called DC three DC three oops DC three target. Uh, I think the PLC's uh, port is 851 uh, and oops like this and here I just put true that this means that we want to report the, the information about the status of the this this twin controller to the console okay now we'll need we do just this build and start so this will kick off the twin controller operations like cyclic reading and uh, some some other stuff so we will need to run the instant compiler to refresh the twin of our RPLC and now what we will we do is that we will main so there should be our simple context and there should be logger variable inside context and we'll start logging messages uh, we want all messages uh, and this is the retrieval loop delay so uh, let's say it can be 10 milliseconds okay now <clears throat> there is another thing we'll do we will need to set up the tc open tc open Inkston, uh, its application domain we need to set up the, the application so builder uh set up blogger okay so we'll make like a new angst Let's DC open Inkston uh, logging and we have a default implementation of Serilog uh, adapter so we will use that uh, at this point and then we start adding other uh, things so the places where we want to uh, store our messages so I'll just switch this into debug mode. Uh, so PLC should be running. 
and now when we run this application as con it's a console application we should start retrieving the messages okay so the application finished before we were able to do anything so uh, let's uh, say console uh, read line uh, and now we can say um, press oops, press enter to exit okay okay so now that all those messages that were they are stored in the buffer are retrieved and we we just get the retrieval of the newly added messages to our to the queue so okay this uh, default implementation of serial adapter just syncs all the logs into the console so let's play around a bit with uh, with serilog and we will add say every log no let me select this notepad okay syncs notepad install okay okay so now we'll customize the the serilog uh, and we will add new log logger configuration let me do this we will take this namespace and we will just make using here new logger configuration and it's a, a write to uh, we should get console right away and also <coughs> write to notepad okay okay now let's start notepad let's put it here and let's start the application okay and now we are logging to both simultaneously into console and into notepad okay let's close this don't save let's close the application and and let's do something more complex so our sync will be also elastic search so let's look for elastic search here uh, so say relog elastic okay this is the sync we will install it okay we get that installed okay so and now let's just add elasticsearch sync into our configuration so for that i prepared a small snippet of code because it's a bit verbose uh, so let's put this here we'll bring in the namespace for the elastic search options let's uh, do it like this so just briefly uh, here we have uh, the options for the elastic elastic search uh, server uh, here is the address uh, there are some uh, settings and basic uh, authentication okay so now let me start uh, Elasticsearch Oops Run And let me also run Kibana And while they are starting I will just do a small cleanup here To make the code more, more concise So we will remove the namespaces And we will put usings at the beginning of the file so using 
Mm, let's do this. Abdomain using Kingston. Uh, using. And I guess that's it. That's all we can. So let me do this. No, okay, it's uh, shorter. Okay, mm, let's see if we are running with the server and with Kibana. It looks like we do. So we'll need to copy this address and we'll go to browser and we'll op open Elasticsearch. We'll log in. Analytics discover. Okay, sorry for this messages. Um, and now we have some messages in the last 15 minutes. But uh, let's focus on this part of the time scale. And now let's run the application. So now we have plenty of messages in the uh, buffer. So when we refresh, we should get do it this way. And here we have here we have the messages. So let's simplify that. Let's uh, just uh, add the text. Uh, and now we can see that we are getting those messages from the context logger into Kibana. So I think this is pretty cool. It's very easy to implement and it just works. Next time I will spend some time explaining what the TCO object is and how it correlates with the context. We'll see some messaging and some WPF based HMI. If you have any comments or any need for further uh, clarification, please let us know. Thank you for watching.